Rumor has it Foxy's bedside manner sucks. Chopper would never allow that kind of nurse in his doctoring space. His medical ward. Boop a doop a doop boo. Boo. Three and a half, not a real season. Three and a half, but still king of the what? Now three and a half. Gonna watch some pirates. Three and a half before season four. Start the show! Hello, fellow adventurers of the Grand Line, and welcome to episode 67 of King of the What Now. We're a podcast that discusses the anime One Piece. I almost said the anime Pirates, which would have also been true. We are testing out a new mic setup, and let me tell you, it sucked to get set up. So if there are audio problems, blame the person who invented audio engineering, because really, I think it's their fault. Uh, I'm the ghost of the show, Cat. And I forgot that we did the bit where we decided what we were going to be ahead of time, and I didn't do that. So I am the victor of a Davy Beck fight. See, I was actually going to suggest that perhaps instead of fellow adventures of the Grand Line, it would be fellow victors of the Davy Beck fight. Uh, I am your... Hmm, what actually happened these? We had the red light, green light. I am your giant machine meant for firing dodgeballs at deadly speed. And who are you? I'm Joel, the host of the show. Longtime fan. Yes, I have been a fan of One Piece for for a many long time. a moon. <laughs> and I'm Curtis. I'm the co-host and the casual One Piece fan. And hey, man, I... it's super cash. Come over, we'll watch some One yeah. Piece cash. You've never been and... casual about One Piece in your life. Don't lie. Well, I'm I'm pretending to be Curtis. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, also, Curtis. I... Also, I am uh, the champion at hole digging. Oh, perfect. Or Whoa. tunneling or whatever it was. <laughs> hole digging. Mm. I like the way you said that. It draws back to the greater themes of this island. Yes. Which episodes did we just watch? Wow, you you beat me to it. I was just about to say, we finished up the Davy Back uh, arc, and that was episodes 215 through 219. Uh, if you're watching at home, then it's them sailing away after uh, some stuff happened. Curtis, why don't you tell us what the stuff is? All right, so it's time for my succinct summary. Time for Pirate Dodgeball, actually. The Straw Hats put up a good fight. But thanks to an arcane set of rules, they are defeated by the Foxy Pirates in another round. The next round is, <clears throat> checks notes, <sighs> red light, green light. The most or, exhilarating game of pirate battle ever. Exactly. <laughs> it was it was a very intense version of red light, green light. I'll give them that. To be fair, when Luffy was fighting Crocodile and he was, I will surpass you, and he's punching through the bedrock or whatever, my only thought was... How intense would this be if we introduced an element of red light, green light? Yep. No, I, you know, I was wondering when we are going to see red light, green light in one piece. And now I know. Mm -hmm. So due to some very strange, gross and unforeseen events, most of the fastest people are eliminated from the game, leaving the slowest straw hats to nearly clench the victory. That is before the eternally lost and clueless Zorlo, Zorro launches the last foxy pirate to the finish. And so the Straw Hats are down two people with no obvious way of getting them both back. Also, it seems Luffy can't count his own crew members. In order to save both of his crew members, the Straw Hats make a new bet. 500 crew members are on the line or the existing crew plus 500 minus X de descendants. And it's time for the fight. Luffy dons some boxing gloves and gets to work and quickly has his ass handed to him by Foxy's creative use of the slow, slow beam to set traps. And that's it. The, one, the end of One Piece turns out it was a story about the perils of hubris all along. No, wait, the rubber man dodged the attack, but he continues to take a beating through the fight as they move through the bowels of the ship. Finally, they get back to the upper deck and Luffy just soaks up the punches. He refuses to let Foxy take any of his crew. Finally, Luffy turns things around and using a mirror gives Foxy a taste of his own slow, slow beam. The Straw Hats win and are reunited. Luffy dismisses the crew that he's won and the Foxy Pirates leave. Also, the old man is reunited with his grandson, who arrived via Mole. Which also provides a convenient way for Tonjit, I think is his name, to be reunited with his people without having to wait for the tides to go down. Yes, exactly. So now he's got a nice little tunnel to get back. And that has been your succinct summary. Well, 
wonderful audio joke, Curtis, <laughs> and we will definitely permit you to make it in future episodes of the podcast after dealing you a severe beating IRL. So let's get to the question that everyone's kind of wondering. How did you like these episodes, Mr. Casual? So they were OK. I liked the fight. The fight was really good. Yeah. <laughs> the dodgeball and the red light, green light were meh. <laughs> I, it all helps knowing that they were both filler. So I that makes sense now. But they were just kind of I don't know. They weren't great. Not not the best one piece has ever given out but the fight was good yes it was very good it gave us a chance to meet afro luffy maybe he'll make appearances later in the series maybe he won't but it's a good running gag that usopp and sanji and even robin seem to uh, believe in the power of the afro to give him greater punches and a greater fighting spirit but Zoro and Nami seem completely oblivious as to its effects and why everyone else is treating it like it's some great transformation. But yeah, hmm? Na- Nami's reactions were pretty good. <laughs> she's she's constantly the one who doesn't get the lunacy of all the other team members of all the other crewmates. And then, you know, her reactions are what sells it and makes it so good. Well, and I love that Robin clearly wasn't like involved one way or another, but she pretended to be just to mess with Nami. I appreciate that about Robin. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I do want to circle back really quick. So yes, the dodgeball game and the green light, red light games weren't really my favorite. However, I do think that the filler writers got one thing right in a way that some of the filler sometimes misunderstands, and that's Sanji's character. He's just about to touch Tonjit, who's the red light, green light guy, and would give victory to the Straw Hats. But Portia is about to fall off the cliff, and he sacrifices the win in order to protect her from getting hurt from the fall. And I just gotta say, that's one of the most on-point Sanji moments. I really liked the way that they wrote that. Yeah, I feel like Sanji has a lot of being gross about women moments, especially in filler. And so giving him a being really chivalrous and taking care of women moment was a nice change of pace for a filler episode. But yeah, so Curtis, if you had to pick between the hilarious uh, dodgeball game that had 999 rules and the hilarious foot race game with the, the with the various mishaps, which 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 of those two would you prefer? Hmm. You mean like. The games in general or the way that they were portrayed? Yeah, the episodes portraying those those games. OK, um, I would say the red light, green light edged out the dodgeball. Fair enough. Which surprised me because I definitely saw the title of the red light, green light episode. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I wanted to see them just play a game of tag after that. Mm, yes, yes, that would be that would be pretty good. Some kind of relay match where Luffy's the runner, but Sanji's the jumper or something. And, you know, Foxy would would screw over the first leg, but then they would slowly begin to, you know, catch the up mm-hmm. uh, yeah. musical chairs where Foxy like picked up one of the chairs with him and the ref just didn't notice. <laughs> or like uh, the, the floor is lava, but with. Actual, actual lava. lava. I feel like they'd do that in one piece. I could see them doing that in one piece if it didn't mean instant death. You know what I'm saying? What What if what? OK, I could see them doing just a normal game of the floor is lava, but getting super intense about it. Just like way too into it. Like, no, don't touch it. Absolutely. Uh, any other stand up moments for you two from those first two, you know, less interesting episodes? There was the part when Chopper dove in to save his captain by taking a ball to the face oh yes that was pretty good he, he even won over the hearts and minds of uh foxy's crew they were like ref you gotta it was definitely a, a face hit it was definitely a face hit he shouldn't be out in the face in the face <laughs> um i'm gonna let you guys have the juicier ones my favorite kind of standout moment was when Usi, Usi, usop and nami were convinced they were going to be the next ones taken. And some passing members of the Foxy crew went, no way, you're too scary and he's too much of a baby. (laughs) (laughs) 
that's truly Usopp is playing the meta game here. He he's a decent sharpshooter. Anyone would be lucky to have him on their crew, but he plays up that part of him that is undesirable to the point where people wouldn't pick him in a Davy back fight. And perhaps we'll meet other One Piece villains who would who would fit that same kind of mold where they they try to act like they're not as dangerous as they actually are. Totes. Okay, so, you know, those, those those matches were fine. They were filler. Oh, really quick note for those who are curious. The way it worked out in the manga, Luffy never actually picked Shelly. I, I thought that that was canon. I thought that they lost the first match, second match Shelly, third match was getting Chopper back. But what actually happened in the manga was they lost the first match, Chopper went to Foxy. They won the second match, the Groggy Ring, they got Chopper back, and then in the third match, Luffy took the Foxy Pirate flag and replaced it with that crudely doodled one, which I gotta say, I love the fact that Luffy can't draw worth shit, and that was already mentioned way back when they needed their own flag, and I'm glad to see it come back with him basically destroying their flag and being super proud of it. I I really liked that. I do wish that he had done something super childish and drawn like a butt on their flag. That Mm. also seems like a Luffy thing to do and would have been funny. And then you could have had a scene where Foxy was like bent over and crying about, he called me a split head with a butt flag. (laughs) But I think Luffy's too nice for that. I don't think he he would like, he wanted to give them a good new one. And that was his honest to God effort at giving them a good Jolly Roger. I think that would be a funny joke, but I do think that we've had too many scenes with Luffy, especially back in Drum Kingdom, of him being like, you can't laugh at a pirate's flag! I don't Uh, think he would disrespect it in that way. But I also, during that final battle, I love how much like how Chopper kind of won the hearts of people by taking the ball to the face. The longer Luffy fought against Foxy and the more times he got knocked down and then like pushed himself back up and the more damage he got, the more Foxy's crew was like, dang, that guy can take a beating. Dang, this fight's going on really long. And they kind of, they didn't, they started to kind of cheer for him. And Fox is like, what are you doing, you idiots? But in the end, like, Luffy kind of won that one in a battle of spirit more so than physical prowess or intellect or anything like that. And I think that he really won over the hearts of of the men that Foxy had, had, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Assembled, collected throughout his years of Davy back fights. Foxy pirates assemble, but with an F, so like... Fussemble. <laughs> um, Fursemble. For, hmm. Fursemble, that's pretty good. Interesting. Fursemble only if they dress up. I mean, I guess they are called the Foxy Pirates. And they all have ears. Joel, mm. here's a quick note for you. You told me that Foxy's background was recently revealed in the Viva cards. That's right. As a quick reminder to folks who might not remember, or any listeners who are goldfish, Viva cards are being released in Japan, which have... Uh, canonical information from Oda, uh, including a lot of characters' official ages, and I think their blood type is on there, like their favorite food, and just kind of like a quick blurb about them. And in it, it was revealed that Foxy actually... Because he he says that he has won, like, 820 matches, you know, undefeated. But he only has 500 crew members, so I was thinking he won 820 baby back fights, but then he would have a larger crew if he's never been defeated. What it was, was back in the day, before he was a pirate, and before he got the uh, the slow, slow, Noro Noro no Mi uh, fruit, he was a boxer, and he was undefeated at that, but then he was ch- caught cheating trying to bring a weapon into the arena, and so then he heard about the Davy back fight, and he was like, oh man, I can win that using my cheating ways, and he set off to become a pirate. Yeah, so boxing was his first love, but he ruined it by cheating and realized a sneaky cheater man is better off as a pirate anyway. But that's why the final fight was a boxing match, is because that's what Foxy does. It, that makes sense. He, he seemed like a boxer, especially like, it's funny, I feel like if you took out the filler pieces, the whole arc would make a little bit more sense, because it seems like it gets super silly in the middle, but... That last fight, he gets very serious, and I'm I'm one. I can't remember back to the beginning now if the beginning rounds were as silly as the filler ones were. There was a fair mix. Yeah, but at the same time, so another thing, I never actually read these manga chapters. Uh, I started reading the manga. Oof, I don't actually remember the specific arc, but it was past this saga. It wasn't the Water Seven saga. I think it was the next one, but. 
Uh, I was reading on the wiki that apparently in the manga version of that first barrel race, it actually wasn't the entire Straw Hat crew. It was just the one barrel racer with Usopp and Nami, and they weren't up against a fleet of foxy ships. It was it was the one with Portia and uh, whatever the fish man's name is. And so oh. I feel like some of the silliness from that first scene, or that first fight, came from exploding barrel mines, came from making fun of Zoro ship, came from Sonji flirting extra. with the... So I think that was all filler as well. Hmm. Interesting. I also did not read the Foxy filler, or not filler, the Foxy chapters. I didn't start reading the manga until... Much, much later. Yeah, I was going to name the arc, but then I decided not to. Eh, I don't know if it spoils anything. Catherine didn't start reading the manga until after Dress Rosa, folks at home. So she's relatively new to the manga. Uh, I'm new-ish. Ah, not at this point, but haven't been reading it since chapter one. I really do need to go back and, and do that. We'll start Curtis on the manga eventually when we run out of anime in three years. <laughs> There's just so much, so much anime. It just never ends. It's like a zombie onslaught. All right, so Curtis, here's a question putting you on the spot. I didn't prepare you for this one before the podcast episode. Was there a specific part of the boxing match that you find uh, interesting? Did you like the end when Luffy started getting up? Did you like the uh, the use of the slow, slow beams at the beginning? Um. Yeah, so I think I liked this, how the creative ways that Foxy used the slow, slow beams. Mm-hmm. Like... You know, to to set up a bunch of delayed cannonballs or delayed arrows, how he like made them more effective by bouncing it off of mirrors. It it showed a level of ingenuity from him that I hadn't expected. And I, I don't know. I like that in the in a villain. It made the fight more interesting. Yeah, I feel like there are some people in the One Piece universe that don't seem threatening, but then actually are when they get down to it. Uh, you know, Godatsu and Buggy kind of are in that same camp, I'd say. Mr. Three, the wax wax man. And so I think that some of the filler episodes kind of padded out with making Foxy seem like an imbecile. And I still think that he is in certain regards, but when it comes to his one-on-one fights, he's actually quite good. There's a reason he hasn't lost a Davy back fight up until he met Luffy. Uh, also, quick shout out to him dressing up as the nurse and the cook. And <laughs> Luffy was just an idiot about it. He's like, oh, what the? You were, you were the chef all along? I was also the doctor. That was you? <laughs> One thing that you've been saying, Joel, is that every fight, every major fight we have in One Piece comes down to a difference in philosophies. And kind of the person with the stronger belief in their philosophy and the stronger will overtakes the other person. Overtakes, you say. Sorry. Ha ha. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, uh, in this fight, the philosophy was pirates don't fight honorably and are all about cheating and amassing as big of a crew as possible, as quickly as possible. Any versus, means possible, yeah. Yeah, versus Luffy's. We fight honorably. What, you don't run away from your opponent when they're trying to punch you. He got really exasperated that Foxy kept running from him aboard the Sexy Foxy, which is the best name for a ship we've had, by the way. Uh, and in the end, Luffy's will overcame Foxy's because he wasn't willing to let a single one of his friends be taken. He had a true bond with his crewmates that, yes, the Foxy pirates, as Curtis pointed out, seems to seem to have sworn fealty easily enough and seem to be like, oh, we love it here. Even those who were just claimed earlier that day, they didn't seem to quite have that same unity. And Foxy didn't seem to really kind of like, oh, no, I'm going to lose Portia and and Hamburg and, and Pan and all that other stuff. Also shout out for that final scene with Luffy versus uh, Foxy when he was slowed down and it was just one of my favorite things in anime is when a character has named their attack and at the beginning of the series they use the attack like once and it's the super powerful one and then later they use like six of them in a row like if you had a rapid fire kamehameha from goku you know he just shot one after another like i really like that for some reason and so having foxy shout rush rush just over and over again it, it actually really did make me go oh god, he's being so brutal, like, in a way that even, like, Anaru at certain times wasn't able to get me to feel. Because uh, he was just wailing on an opponent who couldn't fight back. And then Overtaken starts playing as Luffy pushes himself up. Like, just for that reason alone, I love the Davy back fight. I know there's a lot of people who don't like this arc and they skip it, but god damn, I love it. Yes, and 
that is another point in favor of what I was just saying about the difference in their philosophies. There's no way Luffy would ever stand there and wail on an opponent who was frozen in place. Mm. Until the mm. until the end of this fight, when it's their comeuppance, because he did that so much to Luffy. It's like, well, I'm going to take you out. Man. Yes, and but, I love the fact that he did it with a glass shard that had gotten stuck. Like, mm-hmm. they, Foxy didn't even notice that, so. Yeah, well, and I, I guess to Kat's point, Luffy did it with one punch, right? He just gave him one serious punch. And yes, he was frozen in that, but he didn't sit on there and overdo it. He did enough to knock the guy out of the ring, whereas, um, whereas Foxy was doing it in a way that wouldn't actually make Luffy lose. It was just a way to make him hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, and I, I'm sorry. Oh, I do think somebody needs to make some sort of techno remix of that that bit because it's just him saying rush and then you hear the punching in the background. Mm-hmm. It gets very it gets very repetitive already. It would be perfect. Yes, I'd listen to it. I love the Foxy Pirates. They're pretty good for for the space that they occupy, right? Only what, eight, ten episodes, something like that that we've watched and uh you know, they tell a pretty effective story. You don't get to know a lot of them, but you don't need to. You just need to see them as the opponents in the games that they're playing. Right. Exa- oh, I'm sorry. Before our world famous ag segment, one more quick note. Uh, Robin being super petty with Portia. Beautiful. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. When- oh, yeah. With Chopper. <laughs> Chopper runs into Robin's lap and Robin hugs him. And then she looks at Portia and is like, yeah, it was the, the total side eye. Like I got the man that you've been crushing on all, you know, this last month or whatever. It was so petty. I, I just love Robin so much. At the same time, that was non-canon. I because, yes, it was a great scene, but I think that's a lot more emotion than Robin usually shows. And I think there's a reason. I think that they took some liberties. That's true. But that was a good thing that came out of the filler. Yes. And now it's time for our world famous ad segment. So last week we finished up the Adventures of Blorf and uh, there was a company that that reached out to me and they liked this uh, continuing ad segment situation they're like we'd like to buy 10 episodes of the podcast advertising i have 50 gajinko coins right here and i was like gajinko coins just think of what i could buy with that but it turns out that before i can accept their offer before we can start with this new unknown company we have a secret 11th part of the adventures of blorf that's right blorf <sighs> is coming to the big screen this fall to a theater near you it's the story of Alternate Blorf, another universe that retells the, the story of the first ten parts in an alternate universe with different characters, new settings, and potentially different enemies and friends and romances. But so something... completely different plot. Yeah, it's completely different, but also the same at the same time. And, you know, if you pre-order your tickets now, I'm not usually a fan of pre-ordering tickets, but if you pre-order your ticket now, there's uh, supposedly some kind of like a code that will get sent to your email, and then you can use that and the 10-part the web part series in order to unlock some kind of super secret second ending to the movie. That's that's the rumor. The rumor is that this movie actually has a quote-unquote true ending, just like video games, but only the true fans will be able to find it. So go out there and search it. You know a rumor I heard about this movie? What's the scuttlebutt you heard about this movie? I heard it's going to be broadcast in fabulous 4D. Right? That's incredible. You've got sight. You've got sound. You've got 3D it coming out of the screen. But then the 4D, you're going to be able to taste this movie. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Just just make sure you don't accidentally taste the person in front of you. They don't appreciate you licking the back of their head. Just because that happens to you at movie theaters doesn't mean everyone else is going to try, Curtis. You know, it's that new that new chocolate based hair product I've been using. It's not good for public settings. Now is not the time to be advertising chocolate shampoo, <laughs> Curtis. We are here to sell people on Plorbs Mablorbs' big movie. De- well, it's not actually Plorbs Mablorbs. He, of course, is working with his uncle, Goofy Shoots, in order to produce this movie. And it's just going to be a fantastic Technicolor dream. I did hear that it's going to be four hours, uh, and I don't know if there's a bathroom break in there. So you got to be careful out there, folks. Don't Watch drink too what much. you're doing with your drinks. Yes. Do we have, it- by any chance, the trailer? Yes, we do. And I'm just going to pull it up on my phone and I will project it into the uh, the odd, uh, the podcast mixer do dee dee do And uh, here it goes. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. 
once every 6,000 Gazlorb blorbs, a hero will be born. Boom. Boom, boom. So prepare this fall for the hero to be born. It's time. The stars have a line. You're not my tax accountant. Porbs Mablorbs, his famous story has finally made it to theaters. Some secrets were never meant to be unearthed. But they were meant to be tasted. <laughs> tasted in glorious four dimensions. Even though this, some would argue that's not what dimensions mean, but hey, what do I know? So that was the that was it. <laughs> you know, there were some some visual details that you couldn't quite get in this audio format. But I think if you close your eyes, I think you can foresee some of the Easter eggs that are. We did injustice. Plorbs and Blorbs trusts us. I could see it with my ears. I it was good. Mm-hmm. And we are back. So now we've kind of covered all of like the smaller, you know, quick notes about these episodes. Let's talk a little bit bigger picture. Let's take a. A big view, a big view, a, a view of the, a holistic view, the ha, of the arc. So which of these six fights were good and which were meh? To remind, uh, uh, you know, my co-hosts and listeners, we had the barrel racing game. We had the groggy ring with Sanji and Zoro fighting against the monster trio. We had the roller rink roll around game. We had dodgeball. We had red light, green light. We had Luffy versus Foxy. I don't know if that game actually had like a name. Or if it was just the showdown. Meh. Curtis, you can go ahead. Which ones were your favorite? Which ones were stinkers? Okay, so I would say I liked two out of the six. I liked the groggy ring, and I liked Luffy versus Foxy. Those were both great. The barrel race was okay. The roller rink, I had issues with some of the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and... Dodgeball and Red Light, Green Light were probably the two worst of them. Yeah, I would pretty much uh, agree with that. Even the barrel racing game, because you, I was tempted to be like, well, obviously the filler ones were the bad ones and the, the you know, the real ones that Oda wrote, those were the better ones. But even the barrel racing game wasn't really my thing. And even if some of the aspects were filler, the, just the core of it just seems really uninteresting. Yeah. Kevin, do you have anything to add, or do you pretty much, is it unanimous? No, I actually really liked the roller derby episode. I feel like it highlighted a strength of Luffy's, which is that he learns from his opponents. Yeah, I did forget about that. Luffy learning throughout the roller rinks was good, and as I said, as a as a pretty big Sanji fanboy, I liked his moment in the red light, green light, but I would say overall there's just something that feels a little off. Like, you you go to visit a family member and you suspect that they're actually a changeling and there's just, like, small little things that give them away. For example, they have compound eyes instead of regular eyes, and you go, that's not, that's different, yeah. right? Or they don't chew I, their food, they just open their mouth and the food just, like, sucks into the vortex. <laughs> I don't remember you having an antenna, Grandma. <laughs> All the better to glorp you with. Oh no! Okay, Curtis, you're gonna say something. Uh, no, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All the better to glorp. I can't even say it. Uh, yeah, that's I the great thing about having a stroke in the middle of a podcast is no one can you know replicate you. I guess we're gonna have to move on. Yes. Okay. So one question that you were talking about, Catherine, is that. Technically, Foxy is, right, the final boss of this arc, much like Anaru or Bellamy or Crocodile or, you know, Mr. Five in the, uh, in Whiskey Peak. So what do you think, Curtis? Did this Luffy versus Foxy fight, did it stand up to the other arc finales? Or do you think that it was a lower stakes battle and a lower stakes arc? I mean, so on a larger like a larger global scale is lower stakes, right? Like Enaru was trying to destroy Sky Island. Absolutely. And I'm trying to remember who was before Enaru. It uh, was, uh, oh, uh, it was um, Alabasta. So um, Crocodile, right? It was trying to destroy the kingdom of Alabasta. However, I would make the argument that the threat that Foxy poses to breaking up the Straw Hats crew is to the Straw Hats an equally like big deal. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a lot more personal, but I, for, when we got to the end, I didn't think that 
this would feel like significant until we got to the final round and we had the fight between Luffy and Foxy and we saw how intense it got and it just felt more, I don't know. It, it was a good way to wrap it up. Like they could have, they could have done a lot more better in that, in those first, the first few matches. But, uh, but I don't know. I found the ending to be satisfying. Absolutely. You you use the word personal, which was exactly what I was planning on saying uh, if you didn't cover it. But the threat here is a lot more smaller. It's a lot more intimate. It's not destroying the island, but it is one crew versus another. And Foxy, despite being kind of a buffoon, being kind of goofy, he is a credible threat at the end of the day. And you have that moment of like, is Luffy going to get back up? The dude's using spiky boxing gloves. So I really do enjoy that final fight. The fact that it's three episodes uh, it kind of irritates me a little bit. I think near the end, there's just a lot of Luffy gets up and then he gets slowed down and then he gets punched and he falls. But then he gets up. I feel like you could have just used one of those scenes rather than the two or three we got. They definitely padded it. Yeah, it might have been filler the again. Yep. Um, I really like this fight. I think it's one of the stronger fights we've had so far in the series in terms of entertainment value. Mm. Like it's hard during some of the fights that last multiple episodes to not be bored. For me, at least. I don't know about other people who might be bigger fans of Battle Shonen. But, like, for the Enaru fight, I felt like the climax was really impactful, and Luffy using him to ring the bell was amazing. But the whole fight overall was just kind of like, yes, this is still happening. There's still punches, and Enaru's still made of lightning. But the Foxy fight had new things every couple of seconds, and so it stayed interesting for me. And it was yeah. funny. And it's not often that you get to fight an opponent who is in an area where they like the fact that it's like this weird obstacle course is actually kind of interesting because Foxy designed most of that. You know, he knows exactly where the trick doors are and he knows that room's full of spikes, which here's hoping that you don't get up in the middle of the night, have to go to the bathroom and accidentally choose the wrong door. I was going to mention that we made that joke while we were watching it. But like the fact that he set up this like domain and it's like this man made sort of thing that he created and it's not like he has some insane power his power is pretty cool but that's not what the danger is i liked that as well on that note can we make foxy and crew more threatening or menacing because i feel like like curtis said that they didn't make as big of a deal about the you could lose crewmates aspect of it as maybe they should have and i feel like some of his imbecilic moments were a little bit they detracted from him but also should we make Foxy more menacing or is this a nice like break after the world destruction that Enru is going to impose? I'm definitely on the it was a nice break side. I wouldn't necessarily change anything about this arc except for maybe reduce the amount of filler. At the same time, I think that the Foxy Pirates could have been written slightly differently. Mm -hmm. You could have had the Straw Hats encounter them and have a false utopia set up where all of these people seem really happy, but underneath, like, they're actually terrified or really upset, and you find out it's because they've been taken from their crew and they've had to watch their ships sink in front of them and couldn't do anything because they've sworn fealty to this foxy guy. Mm. And I think that would have made the emotional impact of the final fight a little bit stronger, other than Luffy doesn't want his friends to be taken. He doesn't want anybody's friends to be taken. Mm. But I was happy with it as it was. I, d- I do wish that Luffy took the threat of losing crew members more seriously in the early rounds, because it seems like he was all whimsical about this, right? Until the final round when he finally realized what the stakes were. And I feel I wish that he would have come to realize what the stakes were, like after he lost a crew member in the in round one and been serious in the following rounds. That could have been an anime thing, too. Yeah, I just I don't. I feel like it would have improved the the overall flow of the arc. Mm. I agree. I think, as I've said before, you could make the Foxy taking crew members thing scarier. Uh, give him, you know, like something more like mind control. Uh, give him a split personality type of thing where he seems really dumb and imbecilic, but then every once in a while, you know, the camera changes angle and it's like there's a shadow on his face and he does something like really clever and, and, and sinister maybe taunting Luffy, like, you're going to lose your crewmates in this next fight. Beep, 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 beep. A split personality to go with his split head. Perfect. See? Uh. Um, yeah, and I mean, 
I kind of ask this question just to be devil's advocate, because if you only have a story that's only ever, you know, more higher peaks than before, you eventually get to the point where you have a character who could blow up the entire world in two minutes and you have to stop them. And that's just like unrealistic stakes. Right. It's it's the Pokemon mm-hmm. problem. Once you've introduced God, what is there left? Yeah. What other Pokemon can you introduce? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't like want them to increase like. I, I like having it being a smaller scale personal issue. I just wish that it would have felt more serious uh, before the final before the final round of the Davy back fight. Right. Mm, yep. So like it, ha- having it switch from being like we're facing God to like we're trying to defend our crew it, is a nice reprieve. But you can do it in a way that is still engaging at the same time. From Luffy's perspective, this is a game. And then Chopper gets taken, and then it's not a game anymore. Because, like Joel was oh, saying yeah. in the manga, he wins two out of the three Davy back fights. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, does he win two? Yeah, they win the groggy match as well with Sanji and Zoro. And then they immediately win Luffy versus uh, Foxy. Yeah. So they lose, and then they win and take Chopper back, and then they win again and take their flag. That's what Joel was saying earlier. Oh... See, that would have been better. <laughs> like, that's, that that makes more sense than what they ended up doing in the anime. Yeah, well, and then in the anime, they even when the reason Luffy agreed to another round of Davy back fights after they successfully won the first three uh, was it sounds like fun. No, Luffy, you could actually lose crews, crew members. And, you know, you push your it's just there's some inconsistencies that are introduced by trying to pat it out in the middle of the of the arc. Mm-hmm. I do have one last question before we're going to be signing off uh, for today. So Luffy gets this this afro and Usopp has a little speech, you know, does the does the champion make the afro or does the afro make the champion? Science can not answer that, which is just a great quote. It seems like he's seen the Rocky movies, even though they How? don't have movies. Do they have? But, exactly. Yeah. Um, but so he found my... them buried in an underground bunker that oh, survived the war. It was labeled Fallout 76 on the side and, and that sort yeah. of thing. And next to the broken GLaDOS uh, pieces. OK, but so my original question was going to be who on the crew could could benefit from the Afro as it's portrayed in these episodes, you know, giving them strength and power and giving them the heart of a champion. But maybe we could twist that just a little bit. Which of the crew members, other than Luffy, could use a a change in their appearance? You know, some kind of like power up and uh, changes their abilities in some way, right? Like set Nami on fire and now she can shoot fireballs. Dress Zoro up as a samurai and he has like a defense form. Like who would you give some kind of a transformation to that changed their appearance and also kind of gave them some other ability or something? Yeah, I, I think Zoro has one already because he puts his bandana on, right? Yeah, that's like that's like his love, his like power up moment is when he puts his bandana on. You know, he's serious. <laughs> it's like his backwards hat. Oh, yeah, from Pokemon or whatever. Did you have you noticed that one of the other crew members also has a thing that they do when fights get serious? Oh, Sanchi smokes, doesn't he? Yeah, you figured it out. There's a great, great scene coming up. And it wasn't until that scene happened that I actually realized the first time going through that the bandana and the smoking were a thing. But then I saw this scene. I went, oh, this is good. Mm. I wish there I wish this had been a scene in One Piece and not Yu Yu Hakusho. But somebody in Yu Yu Hakusho uses uh, the sparks from somebody's cigarette to figure out where they are in like a dark cave. And I could just see Sanji doing that. Like he throws a cigarette at somebody and the way the sparks bounce lets him figure out where they are. Mm -hmm. So for myself, who would I give a transformation to? I think we've seen Usopp using the dials and such. So I would love some kind of like he throws on a cape and then he drops it and he's in some kind of like weird like cardboard box like dial super suit. sentai dial robot suit and he's like, I am Mecha yeah. Usopp. That'd be great. Nami having some kind of transformation where like, I don't know, her clothes turn into like thunder clouds or something and now she's the weather lady that's the lamest superhero name ever that's weird i want robin to get a superhero mask and i want it to make her much more uh bold and emotionally expressive but also more aggressive in her fighting style Mm. um and so like 
Just the you want to give Robin roids. Yes, everything she holds inside. I want it to come out when she puts the mask on. Mm. Uh, I was I was thinking it'd be fun if like oh oh here you go right right mm-hmm. you give Nami Thor's hammer. Oh okay, and then she transforms. And has armor on and then can use electricity. Ooh. It kind of ties into the, the weather thing. Yeah, no, I, I really like that. We're all forgetting the most important transformation. We saw in the barrel race, right, that there was the fishman that jumped into the fish's mouth and they, they swam much faster. Oh, yeah. The ultimate transformation would be Zoro riding on Sanji's shoulders. You get Zoro's swords... And Sanji's kicks. What could be more powerful than this? Oh, oh, what if Chopper turns into his big strong form and he carries the the joined version of Sanji and Zoro so that on he has a weapon now that on one side is Zoro with his swords and the other side is Sanji's legs. He's just swinging this thing around. OK, that's not bad. Uh, and again, there's always my hope that the ship will turn into a giant fighting mecha. I think that's going to happen. And I honest to God, just want that goat face like to have angry eyebrows drawn on it. And it's just it's punching the crap out of some <laughs> giant sized opponent. And I think that has been your do 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 final thought outro goes here. Woo! Uh, next episode, we'll be watching the next five episodes of the anime, which is the, I believe it's the Rainbow Mist arc. It's it's something about that. And we're going to follow a new format. Woo! Bye, everyone. Rumor is the announcer guy on a bird can see beyond the fourth wall. Birds give you powers. So ends the next leg of the King of the What Now adventure. We're sad to see you go, but we'll be here next week. If you crave some social interaction with us in the meantime, you can find us on all sorts of different media. We have Gmail, Patreon, and Tumblr. All of those are King of the What Pod. King of the What Pod at gmail.com, patreon.com slash king of the what pod, king of the what pod dot tumblr dot com. Our Twitter handlers are a little bit different. You can reach me at K O T W N underscore pod. And you can contact me, Curtis, at Pirate Co-Host. Also, please take a moment to rate and review our podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen. Not only will this help others find the podcast, but your constructive feedback will help us improve the show as we go. Thanks so much for giving us a listen. Until next time, follow your dreams and protect your treasure. Remember, it doesn't need to be literal treasure.